Good afternoon. Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. We welcome those present here at church and those attending Mass via live stream at home. My name is Janet Champagne, and I will be your lector today. As Catholics, we truly believe that Jesus is present, body and blood, and every time we gather at Mass, it is Jesus' most wonderful gift to us. We gather today as a community of believers to celebrate God's great gifts to us, God's Word and the Eucharist. Today we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday. Our presider is Father John. Our Mass intention is for Richard Atkinson. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity, the community that is God. This great mystery is the ultimate model for all that is. It tells us that we are never alone. Israel was not alone. Jesus was not alone. And the disciples were not alone. All that happens occurs in and through others. Every time we cross ourselves in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are reminded that we are together as one, and so are we. Let us now stand and give praise and glory to our God. Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. We gather here this day, this most Holy Trinity Sunday weekend, to praise God, to acknowledge God's presence in our life as Father, Son, and Spirit. Let's now pause briefly, open our hearts, call to mind our sins, and welcome God's peace and mercy in our life today. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity 
powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to another. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs, and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outreached arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper and that you may have long life on the land, which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. The response today is, blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. Loves justice and right, of the kindness of the Lord the earth is full. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth all their host. For he spoke and it was made, he commanded and it stood forth. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. See the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine blessed the people the lord has chosen chosen to be his own our soul waits for the Shield. May your kindness, O oh Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, their heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them when they all saw him they worshiped but they doubted then Jesus approached and said to them all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always unto the end of the age the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you all this day. Uh, some changes in our worship style here, so slowly but surely we're getting back into our regular patterns. We're seeing a few more verses of the uh, acclamations, the psalm and other masses hearts we can sing together so it's a nice sense of community returning in these days so thanks for being your, being patient there's very limited markets on the floor now and so we're slowly returning to pre-pandemic uh, worship style today the church celebrates the feast of the most holy trinity this is one of the three feasts in a row that we celebrate these days these weeks last week was pentecost trinity today and next weekend is Corpus Christi, so three beautiful feasts in our Catholic life. And today's feast right, has us think about you know, the big question of life, who is God for us? And the many ways that God manifests himself to us. And of course, one key word there is love. How through Father, Son, Spirit, we embrace the beautiful gift of God's love for us in our life. There are also three other words that I think capture this feast day, and those words would be mystery, transcendence, 
and imminence. Each of those words has you know, a meaning to itself as to the feast day of the Most Holy Trinity. We can easy, we've heard often in our Catholic life, the Trinity is a mystery, of course. How can you explain you know, God, you know, three persons, one God? Okay, I believe that. But then as your mind goes you know, into the humanness of that, how can that be? Well, God, it's mystery. And I came across, you know, my readings this week, uh, St. Cyril of Alexandria had a wonderful image of the Trinity. We've all heard in our life the, the, the shamrock, how that's the image of the Trinity, or triangle, the Trinity, all connected but one. But St. Cyril had this beautiful vision of, this, the, of God, of the Son, being the image of the Trinity, how God, the Father, was the blazing sun. Jesus, the light coming from that sun, and the Spirit, the warmth of the sun. It's a nice image, I think. God, sun, light, and the warmth. And so each one of us, in our own way, can process this image of the Trinity, but in a sense, this is um, all about faith and how our faith here expressed is sort of the window into the mystery of the Trinity and how each one of us is invited to really embrace the Trinity in our life. Uh, last week, we had in our city uh, confirmation for adults experience the Holy Spirit in their life. Last week in our parish, we had 85 youngsters in grade two receive Jesus in the sacrament of Eucharist. And so we can see in many ways how the Trinity we embrace in our life. And of course, the first time that you and I heard those words of the Trinity, most of us as infants was at baptism. When the priest, the deacon said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And hopefully very soon we can have our holy water fonts back by the door so as you come into church and as you leave church after Mass to bless yourself. Lord, thank you for this past week. As we go back into the world after celebrating Mass together, Lord, be with me as we go forth into life, my home life, my marriage, my life, my friends, my work. Be with me. And so we're called to embrace this mystery of God entering our life, being part of our world, and how you come, we come here each week often to, in your prayer life, to engage mystery. God, entering God's world. And somehow we have to sort of leave behind the humanness of life and really enter God's world to embrace this doctrine of our Christian life, Trinity. And today's readings from Scripture help us from the Old Testament to Paul's writing to the New Testament to somehow engage the Trinity a bit more. In Deuteronomy, we hear how Moses reminded the people, see what God has done for you. And, Mo and the writer really chronicles this offering. God has been a faithful God, capital G, singular God for you. Covenant love. And how that was expressed through God's presence to you as you wandered in the desert, as you entered the promised land. And often you turned your back on God, but God was faithful to you. God cared about you. And then how that really was reinforced by this writing of God being present to you. And then in Paul's writing, we hear that beautiful, familiar word, Abba, Father. In that language, Abba was a very endearing word, like Daddy. And how Paul reminded the early Christians how they were embraced by a God who cared for them, who loved them, who was part of their life and cared for them as a parent would. 
parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles who care for little kids, know that your heart just is there for them always. You do anything for them to make them happy and content and safe and healthy. Well, you summarize all that, and then a million times more, that's our God. When you think about that, say, wow, embracing that awareness is a great assist in our life. So you try to navigate all of life's twists and turns, ups and downs, that God is there. And in the gospel today, we hear that a Trinitarian formula, go forth now and baptize, the Lord said to the disciples. And that last phrase there, I am with you always until the end of the age. You know, for me, that's a, a great source of comfort to hear the Lord speak to his disciples and to us those words. I am with you always. Every day of your life, our life, God is here. God cares for us until the end of the age, until our life comes to an end or the world comes to an end. God is with us. And for us who believe, who try to live our faith with great gusto and great perseverance, we come to appreciate that. And how in the gospel, it was the great commission for the disciples. Go forth and live the gospel. Go forth and teach the gospel. And that's our common call in our life. But to do that, first of all, you have, we have to know who God is. And that's a, a lifelong journey. When I was in the seminary 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I guess now, one of our first classes that first year was, okay, put on paper how you describe God. I never did that before in my life. Here's a, a first year seminarian. Who is God? Okay, and I struggled a bit to put what I knew in my head from scripture and theology class from college to where I was now as a 20-year-old kid as to God. And all of us in our lives, too, have to really process that a bit. Who is God for you and you and you, your family, your couple? You know, that is so vital. And that takes time. That takes a keen awareness of God active in our life. God as Father, Creator, the world around us every day, the world undergoing creation and new life. God as Son, Jesus, Christmas behind me, to my left, crucifixion, Last Supper, on those stained glass windows to your right, and how we're called to embrace all that and come to experience God in our lives. Then God the Spirit, Pentecost last week, empowering, inspiring us to live life fully in this world. I think it was best, you know, as you may know, in, in Scripture, we never see the word Trinity. Nowhere in Scripture is that word Trinity written down or spoken about. There are many examples of the triune God in action. One of those was at the Annunciation to Mary being the mother of Jesus, how God sent forth a spirit, how God overshadowed Mary, and how Mary gave birth to Jesus, our Lord. And so what a beautiful reminder for all of us that God, we cannot put in a box and think we have it all wrapped up. God is beyond. They said at the beginning of this homily, mystery. When you and I come here to pray, we step into mystery. We engage mystery. And for a lot of people, that's hard to do because they want facts, they want knowledge, they want to make sure. But with faith comes some doubt and some no, no, no discussion. We've got to keep on entering that mystery to engage God. And then we believe in a God who is transcendent beyond this world, no, but also, for sure, a God imminent, a God who is with us in our life, God who cares for us in our world. And once we process those three words, I think we are deepening our awareness of God in our life. Mystery, transcendence, and imminence. 
So my friends, we do our best today to come here as a Catholic community, gather around our altar today to pray, to welcome God into our life, to do our best to stay connected to God every day as best we can, and come to know God better and deeper in our life. It is a personal decision, no matter what our age, where we are in our journey of life, to come to know God, to come to be aware that God is with us in life. And God challenges us to give our best and be our best every day. With the help of this sacrament, our own personal prayer life, our inner motivation, we can give our best to the world to come to know God more in our life. May God bless us, my friends, this day. We come to worship the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, a God who inspires us, empowers us, a God who is mystery, a God who is pure love. We desire that in our life. We desire that connection. May you and I foster that connection every day in our journey. Let's now stand as you and I profess our faith together this afternoon. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the Lord come. Let's now offer our prayers to our triune God for the needs of the world and the church. For the church, in her mission of making disciples of all nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the women whose names have been written on the Mother's Day spiritual bouquets and placed on the altar, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering from the effects of the pandemic, especially those in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, May God's Holy Spirit bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and for an increase in faith, hope, and love among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been affected by violence and hardship and for all who work to bring them relief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the military men and women who have served and who are currently serving in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially all of our loved ones and friends on this Memorial Day weekend, may they rest in God's presence we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Richard Atkinson, who is especially remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the prayers and concerns we silently called to mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Almighty God, listen to our prayers this day. Bless us with your love. Keep us strong in faith always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing the refrain of How Great Thou Art. My sacrifice, say your civil God, the Almighty Father. Sanctified by the evocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, with you, your only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, the unity and substance and the equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day. As in one voice, they pray together. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended to the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the more of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. To hear Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and all your faith-filled people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. We pray this day for Richard Atkinson. Welcome, Richard, and all deceased loved ones into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Let's now gather our prayers together and pray in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we are always free from sin and safe from all distress of life as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. So I'll turn to our friends and offer a safe sign of peace.
My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, who does bring joy and peace and hope into our lives. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
as a Memorial Day remembrance of those who died in service of the country, please join in singing the first verse of America the Beautiful. is devastating the people of India and Brazil. Cardinal Sean has authorized a collection to help the people of these countries this weekend. A donation basket is available in the vestibule of the church. Court Sacred Hearts number 864, the Catholic Daughters of Americas, invites you to celebrate with them in honoring our veterans by donating to the Veterans Northeast Outreach Center in Haverhill. You may deposit donated items in the basket with the red, white, and blue ribbon attached to it in the church vestibule. Please see the bulletin for more details. We are happy to announce that Sacred Hearts Parish will host a vacation Bible school this year on June 21st through June 24th from 9 a.m. to noontime in person. Our theme will be anchored, depending faith in God, appropriate for young people grades kindergarten to sixth. It will be fun, exciting, enriching, and memorable. Join us. Registration forms can be found in the back of the church and on our parish homepage. Thank you and have a pleasant weekend. Thank you, Janet, for those parish updates. And I'm so happy to see life coming back in terms of summer Bible camp and other activities of parish life. And thank you very much for all your support. And I wish you all a wonderful weekend despite the weather. Uh, hopefully we can see some sunshine by midweek and enjoy God's beautiful world. Let's now stand for our final praise. Let us pray. In receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great night, everybody. Good job. See you soon. Mm -hmm.